Once under Sahara Desert, scientists uncovered terrifying new discovery. Africa, a hub of wildlife, lies between around 9 degrees north and 18 degrees east. It stretches in at 30.37 million kilometers square, becoming the second largest continent. Being so close to the equator, the southern area receives direct sun rays, leading to an increase in temperature. An increase in temperature creates a low-pressure area, which allows air molecules to go up and is followed by heavy rainfall. Thus, the southern area has evergreen forests because of this phenomenon, and the cycle repeats around the year, irrespective of the Earth's tilted axis. The northern part is a deadly desert, though it used to be a tropical, wet, and thriving area due to the sudden climate shift in this area. It turned into the desert we see today. In this video, we are going to dig its sand dunes to uncover what secrets are lying beneath them. As I have just told you, the north was once tropical and wet so it must not be hard to imagine whales frolicking on the rolling sand dunes. Scientists have discovered the bones of whales, some as long as 50 feet. They date back to 37 million years ago, when shallow and tropical seas used to cover this northern area. Interestingly, those whales were different from their successors that we see currently. They have feet. Scientists had long suspected that whales were terrestrial mammals that eased into the ocean over millions of years, gradually losing their legs. This assumption is supported by a proof of vestigial hind leg bones in the present whales. The second proof is the excavation of 100 fossils of whales with legs and knees at Wadi Hidden. The paleontologist believes that the ancestors of modern whales were deer or pig-like scavengers living near the sea. Then around 55 million years ago, they started spending more and more time in the water, first eating dead fish along the coastline, then chasing small prey in the shallow water, and eventually wading deeper. Some of them evolved traits that facilitated hunting in water. Over a period of time, they no longer had to bear their total body weight at sea. They got bigger, their backbones elongated, and their rib cages broadened. Shockingly, seven to five fossils out of 100 were found in the middle Atacama Desert in Chile. Now, how they end up there is a question of debate. The second shocking discovery is the link between the Eye of the Sahara and the lost city of Atlantis. The Eye of the Sahara, also known as Richat, is a geological structure that resembles an enormous bull's eye. It is 40 kilometers wide, situated in Mauritania. Until the region was taken up for the research, only a few local nomads were aware of it. Later, astronauts started using it as a landmark to track their landing sequences. Over time, this geological region gained interest amongst scientists. The geologists were first under the impression that the eye of the Sahara was formed by a crater. The crater is created when a meteor hits the Earth's surface and makes a depression. However, the new research found that the rocks inside the structure are entirely from the Earth. The rocks include igneous volcanic deposits, layers of sand and dust formed by wind erosion and deposits of water and mud. The discovery of igneous rocks like kimberlite, carbonatites, and rhyolites prompted scientists to look for other explanations. One of the theories says that this eye is none other than the remains of the lost city of Atlantis. The search for the walled city has been going on since the comment on it made by the Greek philosopher Plato in 350 BC. According to Plato, the city got lost mysteriously in a single night, and he guessed that it could be found in the African country. Unfortunately, the historians were under the assumption that it could be found under the Atlantic Ocean and were rigorously looking there. The new research says that the Eye of Sahara is the actual location of the city. In addition to the exact size and shape of the eye, which is circular, the mountains in the north of the eye are similar to the description given by Plato about the ancient rivers flowing around the Ring City. Apart from this, Plato also passes on the information that the city was sunk beneath the waves of a massive tsunami that hit it and vanished in just one day and one night. The satellite imagery clearly shows both the northern mountains and the tsunami hit like structure all around the eye. The last discovered thing is an object whose function has not been understood till now. It is the Clayton Ring, found in the most inhospitable part of Sahara. The object is named after the geographer and explorer P.A. Clayton. 
These are conical pottery cylinders open at both ends with one or more perforated pottery discs slightly larger than the rings opening, but they do not fit as lids. Some Clayton rings were made by potters in a set and others were reworked from old pottery jars. Interestingly, these earthen objects were not used by Egyptians residing near the Nile River. Rather, they were a significant part of the kit of the mimetic herders living in the Dhaka oasis and so the discs are found near oases around seasonal hunting and herding camps of the nomads. What was the usage and why they were so important to the people of that time is still not known to us, but we hope that the historians will figure it out soon. From the above explorations, we can conclude that Africa no longer remains as a land of natural resources, but also of mysterious discoveries. Who knows, in the future we may see some more mind-blowing discoveries which will change our historical knowledge.